What's a societal norm in your culture that may come as a shock to people from different cultures? It's kind of a shock to me as a Dutch person but it's almost seen Nick and Javar to Pete time again. I'm just blown away by how obviously race-based it all is. Like, I don't know how to handle this one of the most favorite excuses for it all is that Javar to Pete only got black after getting covered in soot by climbing through chimneys. My boomer Dutch dad admitted that that was a version of the Vince they came up with in the 1960s. A more politically correct version of the story. Edit before that it was apparently generally known that Javar de Piet was a black helper to Saint Nick. No small talk or courtesies. Basically in most communication we just speak the most important things and leave it at that. It's not rude or disrespectful. Also you usually smile only for people you know very well and don't greet people who you don't know. You keep safe distance and mind your own business. But if you really get to know someone and especially if you go drinking with them they can share very personal things and talk very much. You just need time to form that relationship. And yes, this is in Finland. Every post here from an American is likely die tragic, highly avoidable deaths so that enormous companies can make a couple extra pennies. Our lives are regularly warped and upended for ludicrous reasons that wouldn't exist elsewhere. We jail enormous percentages of our population and whole communities are traumatized on a regular basis by shocking gruesome violence the posts from people in the UK are like we pay £15 a month for a TV watching license. It's impolite to say no. People say something like well, it's kind of hard right now instead. It's also impolite to talk about money. When foreigners try to hire a native to do something and the latter politely refuses, often the foreigner will offer him some extra money and thus offend him. So the native, fuming, will say anything to get rid of the annoying foreigner, who later gets really surprised when the guy he thought he had hired doesn't show up. Beating your kids. Very common in Southeast Asia. My experience is that I grew up extremely depressed because my mom didn't do it to discipline me she did it to hurt me, I'm guessing they think the worse the action the harder the punishment. But I grew up and find a strange comfort knowing I wasn't the only one after talking to friends of the same background. I'm still going to discipline my kids but I'm not going to repeat the same mistake. Lack of electricity South Africa has, for years, suffered from an energy crisis on a daily basis we experience low shutting blackouts which can last up to a four house at a time, multiple times a day. At this point, we even have an app with a schedule we follow to plan for the blackouts. We become so used to it that we basically schedule our lives activities around it, which is shit, but it's our norm. In Asian culture, relatives fight with each other. Because each one wants to pay the bill for the whole family, eating out. I will pay. I am the most elder person. I have responsibility to the family. No I will pay. Even though I am young. I earn well enough. To cover. Let me pay this time. That sort of argument happens. When I tell it to westerners. They don't believe it. Thought we kiss in the cheek to say hell even with strangers and even men 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 are very affectionate with each other. We don't have that much of respect for our elders like you talk informally with your grandparents and you would talk with your parents almost like you do with friends. We eat dinner late for most of the people. Like 10 p.m. 11 p.m. Don't hold your fork in your left hand to eat. Cut your meat, then lay your knife down, transfer the fork to the right, then take a bite. Switch back to cut the next piece. Otherwise people will think you're scarfing your food down and assume you have terrible table manners. Also, it's not breakfast lunch dinner, it's breakfast dinner supper. In my country we no longer experience much shock or emotion when children are slaughtered at school. It's just something that happens. The government isn't interested in solving the problem and a lot of the people aren't either. We embrace the ways of Malak. Sometimes kids have to die screaming so that we may remain individually empowered. When someone dies, you put them in an open coffin in your front room. Then all your family and neighbors come around morning noon and night to see the body and pray they bring food, drink is often taken, stories of the deceased are swapped and you are never alone till the funeral is over within 2-3 days. Making family reunions, barbecues, and birthday parties by occupying 2-3 of the street in front of your house. Filling the sidewalks and half of the street with plastic tables and chairs. Children running amok in the street. Loud music. Drunk babbling until 3 a.m. with no regard for neighbors. My Catholic boss died. And one of the young Jewish employees, reading about the funeral arrangements, was asking what was meant by the term viewing. He was absolutely horrified to find out, what do you mean the body is there in the room, in an open casket? You've got to be kidding. Holding open the door for other people. If someone is a few steps behind you, 
you hold open the door so it doesn't shut in the other person's face. Sometimes you stand there for a few minutes, until everyone has gone through, sometimes someone else takes over. People's lives being dramatically affected by the cost of healthcare. People staying at jobs or in marriages solely for the healthcare. People living in agony because they can afford healthcare. Bankruptcy due to healthcare debt being common. Keep telling guests to eat more even when they refuse insist for at least two four times. Packing the leftover food for close relatives and marriages or any other big parties. People often get offended if someone does not give them food. Very small one but it never fails to amuse me when I ask non-Asians to remove their shoes before stepping into my house. They act like I just ask them to strip down to their skivvies when all I want is to keep my floors clean. Woman shrugging. Children being treated as their family's breadwinner or a parent's retirement plan. Today's generation is working hard to slowly eradicate or eighty at least make them more manageable though. In short, we do our damn best to set up boundaries. Babies don't get named until after they're born, it's taboo to ask parents about names they're considering, and everyone just calls the child various nicknames until the naming ceremony or christening, usually one two months later. Apparently, being friendly to strangers. Whenever a question like this comes up, one of the top culture shocks non-Americans claim to have when visiting is how friendly and welcoming Americans are. Growing up, I had a friend who was born in Bangladesh. When his family first immigrated, they didn't realize going down to the local park and killing a duck for food is not normal here in America. Spitting on babies or anyone precious to us to ward a bad intent or like a charoho. Nowadays we mostly just make little spitting noises poo 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 and pat their heads a little. Sephardic culture. I guess slurping while eating? In a lot of Asian cultures and more, slurping is a sign that one really enjoys the food and think it is delicious while in Western culture it is considered rude. Washing your ass after a number two. Always awkward explaining to people why there's a fancy water ink next to the toilet alone or handheld bidet. And that one water bottle. A YKYK. Being barefoot is considered normal. Many children walk barefoot to school they have shoes, just choose not to wear them. You'll see barefoot people in supermarkets and fast foods. We're not allowed to touch people with our left hand because it's assumed that's the hand you use to wash your anus. Most people wash themselves with water instead of toilet paper. Offering food and alcohol if you are a guest and insisting rather often to try it even if you refuse to taste everything. I grow up to hate this sort of pushy hospitality. For men, the closer you are as friends, the more you insult each other. My best friend will call me from the other side of the country. Call me a piece of shit. Then hang up. A proper goodbye takes 3-5 hours. Apparently I am rude when I simply say thanks it's been fun but I got to go home and leave without talking for another 3-4 hours. Putting your napkin on your lap while eating at a restaurant. I did this at the Hereford restaurant in Reykjavik, Iceland and the waitress was extremely confused. Friday 5pm to early Sunday you can drink as much as you want and that is okay but having a glass of wine with food outside of its schedule makes you alcoholic. Not offering food to your children's friends when they are over for a visit. It's quite common for them having to wait in the room while the family eats. That we are normal. We don't all play bagpipes, wear kilts or eat haggis at every meal. And I've never heard someone say hoot moan in my life. I was in Ethiopia a few years ago and men who are good friends and just friends hold hands in public. It was kind of sweet. I did forgot a word. Tea all the time. There's tea in the morning, tea at noon, tea in the afternoon and tea at night. There's coffee too but there's always tea. It's pretty easy to access alcohol as a minor in Jamaica. People hardly ask your age and if you look old enough no one even thinks to ask. Being naked isn't a big deal. We have public places for being naked, are naked in the sauna, etc. Mixed genders of course. Nobody cares. In America, if you don't tip, you are judged. Everything is already super expensive and now we feel pressure to pay extra to be nice. We shun manual labor but religiously hit the gym, or run bike streets or trails for miles and end in pursuit of peak physical fitness. If you make money and have high status, it is perfectly normal to fuck your secretary and have a mistress. In fact, it is expected. How much it costs to die here? So many people from other countries comment on the cost of handling the body, funeral, burial. I've seen newcomers low-key freak out on Remembrance Day when everybody stops in their tracks for the minute of silence. Working up until the day you give birth and then having to go back to work two six weeks later depending on the company. Buying anything you want and as much as you want from the local pharmacy without doctor's prescriptions in Vietnam. We don't use our finger to point at the person or object. It's considered impolite. 
We use our hand to refer to it, being extremely direct to the point where that is considered more important than others' feelings or good manners. Denying life-saving care to people that can't afford it so that insurance companies can profit. Blessing our elders. We take elders' hands and put it on our forehead for a sign of respect. Saying sorry isn't apologizing. Sometimes I say sorry, and it means fuck you, instead. Co-sleeping with babies till toddler or until they decide that they want their own bed. Embarrassed smiley face. Your parents forcing or bullying you to choose your degree and job is fine. Living with your parents until you're married, even if you're reaching your 30s. We put our babies outside to sleep, even in winter in sub-zero temperatures. Eating raw jerky salty fish as a celebration kept for 6,000 years. Gay people are allowed to marry and show affection in public. Shower three times a day. Also brush teeth three times a day. Thou shalt not drink cappuccino after 11 o.m. to meridian. Gifting someone something and expecting nothing in return. Talking over people were not rude, just enthusiastic, smiley face. That sweet corn is a top tier ice cream flavor, shocked face, speedy, a YKYK.